Earlier in this course, you learned how to upload, create, and manage files in OneDrive for Business. The process is very, very similar in SharePoint Online, so much so that when we start getting going here, you'll see for yourself just how similar it is. We're starting out here on a sales and marketing team site in SharePoint, and I can see from my left-hand navigation that I can click on Documents, and that's the default document library that came with my team site. I can also see the default home page for that team site hasn't been changed very much, so it's basically out of the box, but I can see some documents have certainly been added to the documents web part on that home page. The web part I see on my home page represents the same document library that's linked on the left-hand navigation. So either way, uh, if I upload documents here or from the home page, they go to the same place. So by clicking on Documents on my left, I'm looking at the full library view, and this should look really familiar from what you may remember from our OneDrive chapter. In fact, when I click on New, we see a lot of the same options, including creating folders, creating documents, um, just something a little bit different down to the bottom here, where I can edit the new menu and maybe restrict people from creating certain types of files, and I can also add templates of my own. For example, let's add a press release template to our library. I click on my new button, I click on add template, and I'm going to upload a press release file. Okay, that's completed. So now when my users come to my site and they click on new, they'll see press release and they can quickly get started just by using that option with that now built in template. And then if you wanted to make sure that people weren't adding certain file types, we would edit the new menu and maybe remove some of the options that weren't relevant to this particular team. And then we save. So SharePoint just gives us that additional ability to modify that new menu and make it really focus on what we want to accomplish per library. Now, since my, my site always comes with the default document library that I can't delete, I could create an additional document library and maybe change the new menu for that one and leave the default alone. So in addition to creating new files and folders and editing that new menu and uh, adding templates to the new menu, we can also upload existing files. And again, this is just like in OneDrive. The big difference here is that in addition to files and folder, we see template, which is the same thing you just saw me do with the press release, just in a different location. Okay, so let's go ahead, we'll upload some files, just a couple here. And you see the process is very similar. We get a progress bar and completed. And folders work the same way as in OneDrive as well, where you can upload the entire folder and all of its contents, and it retains its structure in case you have subfolders. Now, something that's getting a little bit different here is that we can add columns to SharePoint document libraries, which also means that we can edit in grid view and do bulk edits to the properties of each file. We'll learn more about that later in this chapter. You may remember from the first chapter that you could also sync your OneDrive files to your local machine for offline availability. The same thing applies here in SharePoint. What you might want to do instead of syncing each individual library is if you're already syncing your OneDrive, just add a shortcut to your OneDrive to this particular library. That way, when you're using File Explorer, you'll see a link to this library already there. Now, managing files in SharePoint is also a lot like OneDrive, where I can select files, drag, and drop. Okay. I can also select files and move to or copy to, and that's moving to other SharePoint libraries um, on other sites, or it could be moving to my OneDrive or from my OneDrive as well. The recycle bin also works the same way as it does in OneDrive, so I can select files, delete them, and they're going to go to the site recycle bin. So just like our OneDrive recycle bin, files will stay here for 93 days before they're permanently deleted. The difference here is that I can see who deleted the item, who created it, and it's going to be a collection of all of my team members. So in this case, I've got 20 members on this site. Any one of us could have deleted files, and we'll see each other's deleted files here. And any one of us with proper permissions can empty the recycle bin and move those on to the second stage recycle bin, which is only accessible to my site owners. Okay, so let's go back to our document library. Another thing you might want to do, especially since this is a shared library, is you might want to set up an alert for yourself whenever there's activity in the library. We can do that from the top menu here using the ellipsis and alert me. And then I'm going to change this alert title so that when I get an email, my subject line makes a little more sense. So I'm going to call it sales and marketing dash documents. So the name of my site dash name of the library. So I'm going to send those to myself, and I only want to know when new items are added. So I'm going to change uh, the conditions here. 
I'll leave send me alert when anything changes, just as it is, and I don't want immediate notifications, I'd prefer just a daily summary. So every day at 8 a.m. or maybe 5 p.m., I'll get an email that shows me everything new that was added to this shared team site library. And I click OK. Now if I want to change that later, I just use that ellipsis again, manage my alerts, and then I can select and delete that alert if I don't want it anymore, or I can click on the name of the alert to make some changes to the settings that I just configured. And one last thing here that's a little bit different than our, our OneDrive library is we have some additional views and a filter pane. Now additional views, we could always change the look in OneDrive, but we can create additional views that maybe group files differently. For example, we could group them by the month they were added. We could add columns for category or assign to or due date and group them or sort them based on those. And we can do conditional formatting where let's say a file uh, is not approved yet or it's overdue or something and we can highlight that row in red. We'll get into all of those kind of things later in this chapter, but just keep in mind, this is where we're gonna do a lot of that. And then the filters pane just allows us to quickly narrow our results and find what it is specifically that we're looking for in this particular library. In the next lesson, we're gonna learn how to restore the entire SharePoint library to a previous point in time, similar to how we did in OneDrive. Now, if anything I talked about in this particular lesson sounded new to you, be sure to go back to chapter one and watch the lessons relating to documents because they're, they're similar enough that everything you learned there is gonna to apply to any SharePoint library you're working in.